2022. We have a lot in store at this, I would say, historic stage we are in to head towards fossil free transport. Let us get started by introducing our president and CEO, Christian Levy. And welcome to from my side to edition number 67 of the ELR here at Hanover. Four years, wow, and so much has happened in Scania, but also in our industry. Just have a look around you. Of all our vehicles here, there are only two that are not fully electric. And these two, of course, are prepared for renewable fuels. Scania has made its purpose to drive the shift towards sustainable transport systems. And we are today standing at the brink of the biggest change in our industry since forever. At the EO, Scania is here to show you the future of transportation and how the future can look like. The future is going to be sustainable and the future is going to be battery electric. Volumes are starting to grow and we are aiming at already 2030, 50% proportion of our sales to be fully battery electric. That's not only our own target, that is also absolutely necessary in order for us to comply with the decarbonization roadmap of the Paris Agreement. We were the first manufacturer to commit to science-based targets. Targets not only put on ourselves as a manufacturer, but also covering all our customers. Because the decarbonization has to go for the entire value chain. Therefore, we announced Friday a far-reaching initiative to decarbonize the supply chain. We're putting up an extensive strategy together with each and every one of our suppliers to get rid of the majority of the emissions already by 2030. We've identified four hotspots. It's of course about batteries, but also steel, aluminum, and cast iron. These four, let's call it materials, stand for more than 80% of the CO2 emissions from our supply chain. But transformation doesn't end with the value chain. Transformation goes for the entire ecosystem. So even if we have all these fantastic vehicles already in serial production, or very close to, it won't help if, for instance, the charging infrastructure is not in place. This is the question we get from every customer. Therefore, I'm very happy that we, through Trayton, together with Diamond Trucks and Volvo Group, have decided through a joint venture to build out 1,700 charging points throughout eight countries of the main transport corridors in Europe, starting already now and to be finalized within five years. But also customers need to get a vision of what is the future. And therefore, we launched and delivered already during this spring two so-called pilot parking vehicles. One, mining truck to uh, mining company Bulida in North Sweden, 74 ton, and an 80 ton timber truck to paper pulp company SCA, just making the statement that there is no application too difficult or too heavy to electrify. So 2030, I said, half of our sales will be battery electric. So, but what about the rest? And what about all the vehicles that are already rolling on our streets? Well, that's where renewable fuels are playing and will play an ever more important role. And today, we're launching here at the EO an extension of our already very broad program of renewables with a new biogas vehicle lineup with both a 420 horsepower and a 460 horsepower. An excellent option when electrification is not immediately available for a new offer. So ladies and gentlemen, we are heading for very challenging but also exciting times. We have an opportunity, but we also have a big responsibility to drive this shift, the transformation towards sustainable transport systems. And rest assured, Scania is going to lead the way. Thank you very much, and back to you, Camilla.
sustainability. As you can hear, sustainability is at the core of what we do at Scania. And let me now introduce two more colleagues to explain more. Mats Gunnarsson, Head of Commercial Operations, Stefan Opedel, Head of Sales and Marketing. Welcome on stage. And we would like to talk more about how Scania Vegas can actually support us to drive the change towards a sustainable transport system. So why don't we start with this beauty, the red one, the Scania Super that we have in front of our stand here. Stefan, tell us more about this outstanding truck. Yes, Camilla, thanks. Super has really marked a very significant step in performance. We were able with the new engine to cut at least 8% in fuel consumption and CO2 emission. But as you know, Scania is um, really outstanding. He has a, we have an outstanding position fuel efficiency. And with this new truck, we have reinforced that. With this truck, we want the sixth in a row green truck award in 2022. And the fourth 1,000 boots test uh, again. So it's outstanding. It's impressive, the performance of the new vehicle. That's excellent. But equally important, I think, is the solutions to maximize the productivity of our customers' operations. So please, Max, tell us more about that, this. I will. Well, the mission of Scania's sales and service network is to uh, help our customers to operate their Scania's in the most sustainable way possible. This doesn't matter if it's an electrical vehicle, or if it's a gas vehicle, or a uh, diesel vehicle. And uh, I'd like to talk about preventive repairs uh, because we're lucky to have more than 600,000 connected Scania vehicles in the world. And thanks to that, we've been able to, during the last years, to do preventive maintenance. That means that the truck goes to the workshop only when it's necessary. Uh, and that way, keeping up the uptime and more productive time for our customers. Now, we can also, thanks to this, uh, real-time vehicle data, we can do also preventive repairs. That means that we can we know when a, a component is going to break before it breaks. So we can bring the vehicle into the workshop and do a planned repair uh, instead of an unplanned repair. As you know, an unplanned, unplanned repairs are the most expensive repairs. Um, so, yeah, we have more, but we've been trying to package this into a, a product which we call ProCare, which is a kind of contract where we also have an uptime guarantee. And I have colleagues here today that will be very happy to give you more details about that. Thank you, Max. Always one step ahead towards our customers, no? Oh, definitely. That's great. And talking about one step ahead, uh, I would li like now to move into the highlight of our participation here at IEA, which is a wide range of electrical trucks. And talking about the electrical trucks, Stefan, do you think that we have reached sufficient maturity in order to replace the combustion engine with electric trucks at this moment? Yeah, sure, Camilla. We have a right that is up and running for most applications. If we can start here on your left, we see the urban application. And as you see, we have uh, two trucks that look the same as the combustion engine. The main reason is that we don't have a different truck for combustion or electric power train. I mean, we have the modular system and the power unit is just one of the components that we use to produce the truck that feeds the customer needs. If we stay in the city application, here on your right, we can go around with people through our full electric bus. But now, if we leave the city and we move a little bit out, here for the first time, we present the regional tractor that is supporting the transport operation in the suburb areas. But the most important here tomorrow on this stage, we will present what is coming next in the Scania family. Here we will present tomorrow the power unit and the new electrical system that will allow the new low project or low college vehicle to run at 80 kilometers per hour with a load of 40 tons for four and a half hours. And then fully recharge in 45 minutes. This is the time that the customer or the driver it needs to rest as a mandatory option, and then ready to run another four and a half hours. But 
But to do that, we need also to have a new Scania mega charging solution that will be displayed as well tomorrow. So that in a safe, fast, and controlled way, we can load 1,080 battery cells of the local extractor. So actually, there are no excuses. We need to start a transition to zero emission vehicles now. Yes, we need to, to do that. But bringing in electrical vehicles into our customer operations and to their big fleets and pay so much more, can you must elaborate on how we have taken that into heart as Scania? Yes, but I mean, we should not exaggerate the uh, we should not exaggerate the, the, uh, the, the difference in the operating a fleet with electrical trucks with the fleet with, with diesel trucks. There's some things to think about, as Christian said, we're going to be about charging and wage and so forth. Uh, but I mean, that's our job to make uh, what is, seems complicated to make it simple. So that's why we, we with our electrical offering or, or trucks, we offer also a total solution. Um, for our customers now that wants, who wants to go electric. Of course, it's the normal stuff. We, we do the optimal specification for the transport, we do a tailor-made financing, insurance, but also a service solution. But in addition to that, we, we also look over the entire fleet of uh, the customer. We have this new fancy proprietary analytics tool that I have colleagues also who would love to demonstrate that to you today, um, where we analyze the total uh, transport system and the logistical system, because it's not exactly the same thing. You should not, it's impossible sometimes, the idea of just to swap a diesel truck to electrical truck on the same route. But you need to electrify the whole transport system and the whole fleet, and we are happy to help uh, with that. But you asked also, Camilla, if uh, our network is ready. Yes, it is ready. Our technicians, they are trained and they have all the necessary equipment to uh, service and repair electrical trucks and bus. So, just to uh, summarize, we, as uh, Stefan said, we have the product, we have the people, and if the customer is ready, we are ready. That's great. Uh, thank you for the brief overview. And this was only an appetizer. And I would like to say that we will delve deeper into these subjects and also other interesting subjects in our broadcasting studio during the days that we are here. And you are so welcome to join us again or follow us on YouTube. And by that, we would like to thank you all for participating and attending the Scania Press Conference at IAA. Thank you.